Your fingerprints were not found at the murder scene, and they didn't test Rosario's fingerprints to, for exclusion or otherwise. And interestingly, in one of his statements, he admitted having a gun earlier in the night. Well, did he ultimately give you the gun? Yes, very and stupid. Did you have it when you were ultimately caught? Yeah. And that's why they tested you for gunshot residue. Yeah. So you had the gun. Why did he give it to you? Why did you take it? Well, he bent down to get the gun from the officer, and he gave it to me. I don't know if he was thinking, oh, my God, I just shot somebody, or if he's just like, here, man, take this. I got to get this other gun, you know? And I don't know if this was a subconscious thing with me, but I remember thinking, like, it's his gun, OK? okay. I, I got I have the gun. I could turn it in, and everybody will know. You know what I mean? It, it's stupid. It, it sounds stupid now. Well, Rob Will says it's about believing the evidence. Well, someone who does believe Rob is innocent is Jason Flom. Now, Jason is the CEO of Lava Records, but for the past three decades, he has been a prison reform activist. So, Jason, thank you for joining us and being here to talk about this. You've been following uh, Rob Will's case for a good while. Yeah, um, over a year now, and uh, the facts in the case just don't add up to any, I don't think any reasonable person can say that he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. There's too many things that don't make any Such sense. Such as? There it really is no physical evidence. It's what judge, uh, the judge said, the federal judge said, right, that there is only circumstantial evidence in this case, and that there is, uh, there are, are, as he said, grave errors in every phase of the trial proceedings. This is a, a federal judge, one of the most respected judges, I think, on the bench, I think we can all agree, in the entire country, certainly in the state of Texas. You're about Judge Ellison? Yes. And, you well, know, Judge for... Ellison made a statement that I think we, we should take a look at. He said, the case originated as a straightforward habeas corpus petition and has become a procedural imbroglio. Now, that should not, however, obscure the troubling possibility of petitioner Robert Gene Will's actual innocence. Now, conduct of Will's original state habeas corpus counsel appears to have been severely compromised by serious health condition. The court is particularly sensitive to the absence of any direct evidence of Will's guilt and the number of witnesses who aver that another man confessed to the underlying murder. What do you think about that? Well, everything that could have gone wrong in Rob's case went wrong. That's not how someone who's facing the death penalty should be represented. You have to look at everything Judge Ellison has written. You can't just, these things are important, but so is all of his opinions. And what he's also said, Doctor, is that, if I can, is that these convicted felons, where well, their statements don't have credibility. His girlfriend doesn't have credibility. You also have to look at, again, he not only carjacks Cassandra Simmons, when he does, he says, I shot a police officer. I shot a policeman. So is it a circumstantial case? Sure. How many capital murders are there that you okay. actually see on You say video? he said that to who? Cassandra Simmons, the woman he carjacked across the street. Okay, now the first eight times she was talked to, she didn't say that. So she... True? That is true, but she did tell the local CBS affiliate the day after, the, the, the immediate day after, he told me, I shot a police officer. Yeah, she's interviewed eight times. She, and correct. she says, get out of your car. He said, give me your car. The ninth time, she adds, I shot a cop. A jury considered this, and they found her to be credible, and they found him guilty. And wasn't there a witness on the sidewalk watching him take the car, who also testified that he said, just give me your car, and did not testify that he said, I shot a cop, give me your car. I do not recall that. And this is important. Okay. That witness apparently was not located and certainly not presented at trial. But he overheard the interaction between Rob Will and Cassandra Simmons and just reported to the police that day that he overheard that uh, he told Cassandra to get out of the car. No mention of this later statement that Cassandra Simmons attributes to Rob Will. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.